In order to determine how far the electron is from the origin, when it momentarily stops, we have to understand that when the question mentions that it stops, then at that moment its velocity is equal to zero meters per second. Now, of course, the question does not give us a velocity function. It gives us a position function. But we know that we can change a position function into velocity by computing its derivative. So in other words, the velocity turns out to be the derivative of the position function with respect to time. So what we're going to need to do is find the derivative of this function here. And if you look carefully, in order to compute the derivative, we're going to have to use the product rule. And the reason for that is because we have one function, 16t, being multiplied by another function, e to the negative t. So whenever you want to calculate the derivative of one function that's multiplied by another function, you have to use the product rule. There are several ways to represent the product rule, but one way would be as follows. If we let the first function equal f and the second function equal g, then the derivative of the f function multiplied by the g function would be as follows. I like to call this fig plus gif. And basically it just means to take the derivative of the f function and multiply it by g, and then add the derivative of the g function multiplied by f. So let's lay this out so that we can accurately compute the derivative. We know again that the f function is 16t, and the g function is e to the negative t. We're also going to need to find the derivative of each of these functions. Now, the derivative of 16t, of course, is just 16. The derivative of e to the negative t, there's a bit of a rule you can follow when computing the derivative of e raised to a constant in front of your variable t. If you want to do the derivative of e raised to a constant t, with respect to time, then it turns out, according to the chain rule, you would have e raised to the constant t multiplied by that constant. Now, in this case, if you look carefully, the constant that's in front of the t variable is a negative 1. So when we do the derivative following this rule right here, we would have e raised to the negative 1t multiplied by that constant that was in front of the t. And again, that constant was negative 1. So that would be the derivative of e to the negative t with respect to time. Probably is nicer to write that as negative e to the negative t. So now that we have all of the components of our product rule, we're going to follow the fig plus gif format. So in other words, the derivative of the position function with respect to time, which again is equal to the velocity, will equal... Here we go to follow the product rule. So we have f prime, which we determined was 16, multiplied by g, which was e to the negative t, plus g prime, which was negative e to the negative t, multiplied by f, which was 16t. Now let's clean this up just a little bit. We have the addition of a negative quantity, so that is the same thing as subtraction. So we can actually rewrite this as 16e to the negative t minus, and then also this 16t is more conveniently written in front of the e to the negative t. So we would have 16t times e to the negative t. So this would be our velocity function. Remember the question noted that the particle will momentarily stop, and we mentioned that that means the velocity is equal to zero. So we're going to actually set this velocity equal to zero and try to solve for t. Now, we can solve for t by noting that there is a greatest common factor here. We have a greatest common factor of 16e to the negative t. You can see this term obviously has a 16e to the negative t, and this other term also has it. Here's the 16, and here's the e to the negative t. So you factor out 16e to the negative t, and then that would leave you with, inside of the parentheses, 1 minus t. And again, this is set equal to 0. To continue solving for t, you technically have to set each factor equal to 0. So you would have 16e to the negative t equals 0, and 1 minus t equals 0. The equation on the right-hand side is easy to solve. We can add t to both sides, and we see that t 
t would equal one second. This turns out to not have any solution. One way of thinking about that is to remember that you have an exponential function raised to a negative variable. So that would look graphically something like this. In fact, it would cross the y-axis. So something like that. But notice it approaches zero. It never actually equals zero. So there is no solution to this equation. And therefore, the only solution will be time equals one second. So now that we have the time, we can go back and find the position. Remember, it didn't want when it stops, it wanted how far is the electron from the origin, so it actually is asking you to find a position. So we go back to our position function now, and we simply plug in the one second that we obtained earlier. So we would have x equals 16 multiplied by 1, and then e raised to the negative 1. And this will give us our position in meters. Certainly would pick up our calculator, and compute this value. So 16 times 1 times e raised to the negative 1 turns out to be about 5.89 meters. So this will be the correct answer to the question.